Damon is there. Damon, how are you? Oh, I haven't got your mic. Mike. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. I went and had to <laughs> yell at my dog before we came in here, and I hit mute and forgot to turn it off. <laughs> hey, love dogs. Listen, if dogs can steal shows. You know, you know don't yeah. never work with kids or dirt. Yeah. I think I have a package or something because he was barking. <laughs> hey, can I reinforce um, Justin's superpower? So him and I have just recently met. Same day him and I chatted, I, I introduced him to Steven. <laughs> and what he was talking about is he's, he finds these common denominators among successful people. And so he was saying, you know, what uh, some of the, you know, a lot of them have kids, a lot of them are married, this and this and this. And he says, what about your wife? Uh, you know, a lot of these people I talk to their, their spouses are either teachers or nurses. And he says, what is your wife? And I said, well, we're fortunate enough she gets to stay at home. And he goes, what if she wasn't at home? What would she be? And I'm like, damn it, a nurse. <laughs> Right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I thought that was interesting. It is. That is interesting. Well, listen, we super appreciate you being here. And uh, again, everyone, make sure you check out all of these names on LinkedIn. So go see Damon's uh, uh, LinkedIn profile. Damon, very quickly, you know, generally speaking, just for anyone who doesn't know who you are, what is, if you tell people what do you do, what kind of what you do? Uh, so I founded a SEO agency, a search engine marketing agency, 14 years ago. So I stay in my lane just like Justin, and, and I'm not the paid ads guy. I'm not the PPC social media guy. I'm just the search engine marketing guy. And, you know, Stephen and I met um, through kind of like he says, through honesty, through LinkedIn. And I get on and do a lot of these vulnerable posts and just give away the answers and don't send people to landing page and don't send them to email lists. And I just help where I can help. And then it, it's the whole abundance mindset thing. And it just attracts your ideal buyers through that process. Wow. Love that. Love that. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here. And I'm going to throw you to Stephen with your question. Yeah. So, hey, buddy. Hey, Steven, good chat. So you said earlier you're obsessed with destroying doubt, and that was kind of a good opportunity for me to, to ask you about something that's kind of, I've realized more recently. So I find myself always being a forward mover. If I have a goal that comes to mind, I say, how do I get there and reverse engineer it? And I just go. And not until recently, I haven't, it's not that I thought that was unique, but I've realized more so that the world is the opposite of that. And so I've had to become more knowingly um, empathetic to that. And so it's, it's, it's fascinating to me, you know, why do so many people have internal fears and doubts? And why, why is the majority of the, the world in this space of self doubt? Because most people have outsourced their identity to someone else's opinion. Hmm. social media has given us the ability to instantaneously validate myself so if we two things that come to mind just from what you said and then i'll come up with something in a second unique is you useful is craved and useful in the another word is confident example one of the reasons both justin and yourself stand out and is the, from the point of view of you're an example of what people crave you, and guess yeah. what? Both of you stay in your lane. Both of you decide your human, your superpowers. So as far as that's concerned, the b b uniqueness is you, useful is craved. Now, if we have a 100-year life, we'll do this real quick, and people have seen me do this before. If the first 50 years of your life, from the moment you're born to the moment that you get to 50, all your life is about accumulation. You get a life, you get you get a, a schooling, you get friends, you get your first girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, you get a house, blah, 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 all those types of things. Your kids grow up. By about 50, your life changes. So the second 50 years of your life is about significance. But from the moment you're born to the moment you die, either through accumulation or significance, you're trying to validate your existence. And today, most people, V in most people's words today is opinion in the form of likes, comments, shares, views, testimonials, recommendations, their, their addiction to getting someone else to define what they are and validate themselves become, because of it. And the ego absolutely loves it because as soon as your ego takes over your existence, you've just doomed yourself to a life of failure. And that's why a couple of episodes ago we talked about the five regrets of the dying and the five regrets of the dying are people who have actually outsourced their identity to opinion. So I want to go, I want to go, come on, come on, buddy. Yeah, go, go, go one step further. Why do we even get to that point though? Why there, it sounds like there's something even seated beneath that to, 
cause the necessity to have validation. I did this a couple of shows back. Um, human beings, there's nine behavioral engagements I, I call about them. Human beings are herd animals. We live in patterns and success and failure leaves clues. I'll just say clues. Herd animals, we lived in caves, city, and now we live in virtual communities and we've done it all the time. So when people are going, oh, you won't believe it, we're sitting around with iPads and scribbling on iPads in condos. We were sitting around in caves, scribbling on caves wall, cave walls. Instagram, the first Instagrams on a cave wall 80, 40, 50,000 years ago. So instead of scribbling on an iPad in a condo, we used to scribble on a cave wall. It's no different, we're herd animals. We live, live based on our culture, our condition and our circumstances. And we, our failure is on the basis of not speaking up, hesitating to act and our addiction to opinion. Why? Because if I, if I actually forget about my addiction to what other people think, I speak up, I don't hesitate, I don't care about my community, my culture and my circumstances, I'm actually going to basically create my own world called me most people won't do it because if I'm addicted mm. to not speaking up, to not he to hesitating because I want to fit into my culture, condition and circumstances because my virtual group may not like it if I turn around and say these words to you. I don't care what you think of me, but I sure do care with what you think of you and I dedicate my every breath to making sure you wake up and look in the mirror and love what you see. I don't care what you think of me because I'm too busy caring how much you think of you. Cool. And that becomes the platform of what you and uh, Justin call superpower. And then you call it swimming in your lane. The reality is if there's a billion people online at any one time, and I did this with some numbers on Gary Vaynerchuk once, and I actually thought, okay, Vaynerchuk puts out a video and 60 squillion billion people watch. And I think, uh, I think it was 0.00008% of people online at any time, one time were watching his 330,000 views in the space of about three hours. Hmm. And I asked myself, little old Stevie, what would happen if little old Stevie put a video out and 0.1% of everyone online actioned it? I'd be in trouble. So what yeah. Peter Clark once said to me was really, really simple. Great thing Peter said. Steve, find a thousand people. Find a thousand people that will almost find a way to love and live loyalty the way you love and live loyal to them. And that will change and define the rest of your life. So I put out, like, for example, the last few weeks, we've been so focused on doing what we're doing, some of the stuff you know, you're aware of from other conversations, that my viewships on things have gone down to the floor because I've, my attitude right now is this is what I'm focused on doing and I'll get to the actual views and the activity, but right now this is what I'm doing, building a platform. So one of the things, and this is from Bob Iger said this, so from that point of view, who are your thousand? What do they look like? Who are the people you'd want to be friends with? Who are the people you'd want to do business with? Who are the people you want to buy, have you buy from? Because what he said when he was the CEO, he was bidding to be the CEO of um, Disney, he said he did three strategic things to pitch for the job over, over nine months. The first thing, he created high value content that represented the essence of the Disney brand. The second thing is he created a technology platform that he could dis distribute it on. And the third thing that he did was created a global reach. Everything else was eradicated. Everything else was eradicated. And that high value content was Marvel Comics, 21st Century, Lucas Films, Marvel Studios, and then the technology platforms that they built to stream all of that stuff on, and then the global reach, which included all the stuff around the Disney, the Disney properties and Disney hotels. So your thousand people you need to focus on what is the thousand people that you want to build a relationship which is so profound in its profit that the wealth will generate the riches based on the high value content of the technology platform and the global reach that you have. And bear in mind, 98% of people are addicted to pleasure, comfort and entertainment. It's the reason Friday night's the highlight of the week. Let me have you take it a step further on the thousand people because uh, yeah, sure. more specifically on the on the business angle. So yeah. 
you know, with the types of businesses that I work with, they're all across the board, right? There's yes. professional sports teams, there's international real estate companies, there's Inc. 5000 groups, businesses featured on TV shows, blah, 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 blah. So they're, they're just everywhere. I mean, I have a lumber yard, I have uh, an attorney that fo- specializes in narcissistic relationships, I have technology clients. So the problem that I have is, okay, how do I, how do I find a thousand people? Because we've grown substantially just by referrals, because not only do we say what are the advantages of, of what we do, but also here's the disadvantages. So just like we're yep. talking about just transparency. Yep. And it, it, I have people come to me all the time and say, well, who's your buyer persona? And I'm like, I don't know. So if I wanted to amplify what I'm already doing that's proven to to be successful, um, how do I even find the thousand people? Because I know there's a common denominator with the buyer, but I don't know what that is because there's no common denominator in their industries. Yeah, but you're thinking of the individual. Yeah, well, I am because that's who I want to figure out who to, who to more fine tune yeah, my message. But if you if you come to the board, Peter, diverse you you said diversity in the context of the thousand people or your 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 client base. What num, my number one question for you is: Why have you got such a diverse client base? What are you doing that's creating such diversity? Because aren't you the SEO guy for the small business owner who wants to improve their bottom line, or aren't you the SEO guy for the the real estate developer who wants to build whatever? What why are you creating diversity in your market space? What are you doing? Because at the moment, if this is growing, my question to you is why are you creating diversity? Number two, what, and it sounds like it's the old marketing stuff, but it's another way of, it's, it's the same, same approach. What are they coming to you for? And why, what, why is what you're doing? What is the outcome they're getting? Example is why they're sticking. Forget about persona. Forget about it. Forget about it. What? Why? If you're growing, because if you if you had nothing happening, and I know you do, because I think it's a superstar stuff that you do, your diversity is created a, a whole pile of growth. What's the commons in your in your growth of diversity? What are you doing that's creating diversity? What outcome are that diverse group getting? And what's the example of why they're sticking? Because I've seen the law, lo- I've seen the loyalty of your team and that beautiful message from the Philippines uh, that that they sent you about your birthday, and I get, and I've seen some of the recommendations. That, and the other thing is, they're not testimonials about what you've done, Damon. They're impact statements on what you've done mm-hmm. for them. So, number one, what are you doing that's creating diversity? What's the outcome that's com- coming from the diversity, and why are they sticking because of the diversity? Because at the moment, you're trying to think, how do I re-engineer to a persona? You don't. What are you doing? Outcome and stickability. Why? No, not necessarily. I don't want to. I don't want to fix what's not broken. I don't no, want to reverse engineer this. I want to amplify it. Then you amplify. Am, might, speak louder of that. Speak louder of that. Speak louder of that. So, why? Why? Why is it that I'm interested in talking to you in the next week about what we're doing with Desadi? Not be- because of these things. Because of. Here's mine, because of the inherent focus that you have on, on a commitment to people, because of some of the personal drivers of what you want to do for people, and because of the actual consistency with which you deliver what you do with authentic, authenticity. It's real dealing with you, competing with everyone else who says SEO, and then you switch off. It's like everyone who goes, I'm a life coach, NLP, oh, my God. Nothing wrong with it, but you're not leading with your humanity. Yeah. You lead with your humanity, which is the first reason. The reason I'm interested in talking further with you about our stuff is because of the nature of what you represent every single time you post. So what I would do if we were doing work together in this context of my, my stuff, or my stuff to you and uh, instead of what you might do for, yeah. for me, what I want to know what you're doing that's creating diversity. I want to know what you're creating, what outcome you're creating that's creating diversity and why these people love you to bits and are so loyal to you. Amplify the answer to those three questions. That's what the game is. I got, told, I got told, Steve, no one will believe you can do what you do on a whiteboard as fast as you do. From one of the Desadi guests in Miami, you need to do one-to-ones in front of many. And then Peter asked me to do an interview on one of his linked up LinkedIn linked ups. And I said that line to Peter and goes, yeah, we should. 18 shows later, inspiring insights. What is it? Me doing one-to-ones in front of many. Because that's what they told me. This is what you do, Steve. No one will believe it, so go do it. What are, what, what are they, what's the answer to those three and amplify that? 
Well, I, I can answer two and three. The the number one is the wild card, though. So you know, can you can you bring that whiteboard up a little bit more so I can see it? So the the what the what? Yeah, no, you're good. You got it now. Peter brought it up. So the the what is you know I actually deliver on what they expect. So they come for online marketing, and I make online marketing happen. And yeah. I have I have you know consistent follow through. And and as you kind of touched on, it's not just a get them take their money and run like i will say no if i don't feel like i can bring them results so then why they stick is because it happens i i hold their hand along the journey and i say here's what's next and i set expectations but the the why in the beginning being that it's almost all referrals is you know two and three is what drives the people to, to refer to number one but i don't have a con so so maybe this is a more simplistic way of approaching what my question is um mm -hmm. i i know how to bring what i bring to people when i get in touch with them but let's say i want to meet more of those people that i know i can help and we just boil this down to me just wanting to connect with new people on linkedin or whatever mm -hmm. so because i can profile and find a target audience based on what i can do in number two and three I don't know though who to reach out to and engage to say, hey, like I'm not the snake oil salesman SEO guy. Um, I can bring you results, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, super cool. I'm glad to connect either way. You said most of your growth is coming from referral. Mm -hmm. First exercise for me would pick out three, four, five, ten, whatever number you want, and ask them what is the impact I've had on your business and not from the context of bottom line increase, what is the impact your association with me has been? Mm. And put it into three categories, on a personal level, on a professional level, at an optimization level. Ask them those three questions and see what they ask you. The words that they use is the words that, you know this, the words that they use are the words that you can go start seeking other people that are, that are using it. Yeah. The other thing sense. as well is if your referral base is strong, how many people would what like from my point of view is I would love with Justin for example as soon as you told me to introduce you introduced me to Justin less than half an hour later I asked him to speak the next day on that 15 minute call the next day before he dashed off to lunch or dinner with his kids how I organized for him to join you on the show so Justin joins you on the show today and I've only known him less than a week because I wanted Justin to hang out with you on the show and you don't even know each other except the commonality of why you want to refer each other. What is the commons around why people are referring? So find three, mm -hmm. six, nine, 12, whatever the number is, and ask them, what's my impact on you personally, my impact on your business professionally, my impact on how your confidence is in terms of what you do? And use the word impact, because you don't want them to write back going, oh, you're really good at SEO. You're really good <laughs> at it. You're really what is the impact on Steve in your life? If I hang around with you for five minutes, I'm going to change your life, period. That's it. So that's if you want to amplify, amplify why others are saying such good things about you. And if you think of Justin, there's a definitiveness of purpose of what he believes in. Most people would think you're arrogant to say superhero. He mm -hmm. says it with such empathy and sincerity that what would have sound like an arrogant comment comes across as, can I have some? Yeah. Can I have some? So the number one thing, what is my impact on you personally, professionally, and what impact have I had on you? And those three questions with language correctly will start giving you, and what it will do is open the door of you actually being able to expand the, the referral program and then all the fancy stuff you can do with referral programs. Mm -hmm. Deciding Soul Shifters is a community of getting people to ask who, who wants to be part of Soul Shifters. So this Saturday, everyone, I'm going to get on the, on, on the call, no whiteboards, no nothing, and for an hour or so, people can hang out and have coffee with me. It's no question and answer. It's just hanging out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Michelle and Sarah... Rashmi have all said, oh, it was lovely we did that, Steve. Can we have coffee again? So I'm just going to let people hang out with us. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a free coaching session. It's not, there's no whiteboards. It's just me with a cup of coffee hanging out. Why? Because I want to nurture the environment of why people want to be together. Why are people referring you, Damon? You're a freaking nice guy. It's why I'm interested in working <laughs> out how we do some stuff. And you know what? The world is craving for people who are really nice guys. An example of the expression of the humanity of what's true. How many people want to buy a pet project of a little cabin on the lake so they can do it with their kids? It's a beautiful story. So yeah. my advice would be do that exercise of asking and then amplify the answers.
Yeah, I think that's perfect because I just need my foot in the door on on what path to take, and I can take it from there. So that's a good start. I, mate, I, I, I just think you 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 need. To, <clears throat> this is me going off on one. You need to acknowledge how good you are, not at SEO because you're freaking awesome at it. How good you are at being present in someone's life. It's just we had that call ages ago, two three months ago. It was just enjoyable being in your company. Yeah. Yeah, I, no, know I, you know about, I know you know about SEO, but we spent 90% 90, 90 of that 45-minute call doing nothing else except I get this guy. I know he's good. I don't need to be sold on his goodness. I don't need right. to be sold on his ability. I need to be sold on his goodness. I appreciate but, it. Fantastic. Damon, I see <laughs> So relate to some of that stuff you said, uh, we, and only for time purposes for the show, I can't get into right now, but I do relate to the idea of, of <laughs> you know, yeah, there's something I wanted to say to you. <laughs> That's an inside joke for freezing everybody. But Damon, you know, the, the, the point is, uh, uh, maybe we'll chat about this another time. Yeah. I struggle with that as a content creator that I could literally have as one customer, a national airline, and, and someone over here is yeah. an, auto, an auto mechanic. And you're yeah. like, how did that happen? How did I work with, you know, why is that happening? So, so yeah, that exactly. Point, now hold that thought if you can. Go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. Just one sec. Yeah. Whether they're an online mechanic, whether they're an online coach, whether they're SEO, whether they're a musician, whether they're a janitor, whether they're a CEO, have you noticed how their behavior changes to a common element of the compassion of wanting to make sure that what's important in those life experiences that I put out in the in the masterclass, have you noticed that when a trigger happens, our compassion is driven by the same thing, whether you're Chinese, Japanese, American, Australian, Kiwi, whatever. Humanity is the common element of what it makes everyone the same. And when you behave with a level of humanity that you've got, Damon, you will amplify your business. And it's time because people don't want to optimize their website. They want to optimize themselves and the website will come with them. Yeah. Boom. Why and you can do it. and you can do it because it's the only reason I'm interested in talking to you. Fantastic. But what about my beard? <laughs> another hey, that's another another show, Damon. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Yeah.